Welcome. My name is Alex Sankar, and this summer I worked with Dr. Aletha Bauman, Dr. Karen Schoen, and Michael Rosario to see if blood pressure and perceived racial discrimination may be a predictor of episodic memory among older Black Caribbean adults. I question, do blood pressure and perceived racial discrimination predict late-life episodic memory in older Black Caribbean adults? I hypothesize that older Black Caribbean adults experience changes to their episodic memory due to blood pressure and perceived racial discrimination. Blood pressure is the pressure exerted by the blood upon the walls of the blood vessels and especially arteries. There are two measures in blood pressure. We have systolic pressure, the artery walls as the heart beats, and then we have diastolic pressure which is the pressure against artery walls as the heart is resting between those beats. Each participant had two blood pressures taken, and from those two blood pressures, the mean arterial pressure will be calculated. That equation is systolic blood pressure plus two multiplied by diastolic blood pressure divided by three. Those, re those results will be recorded in millimeter of mercury. Racial discrimination is defined by the American Psychological Association as the differential treatment of individuals because of their membership in a particular racial group. It has been found that extended exposure to those experiences of discrimination has been determined to have negative consequences with significance to the decline in later in life cognition. Have you ever had mo a moment where you're wondering, where did I just put my car keys? Where did I put my cell phone? Why can't I find my car? All of these things can be considered episodic memory, which was first discussed in, in detail by Endel Tolving in his 1972 book, Organization of Memory. Tolving described episodic memory as a recently evolved, late developing, and early deteriorating past-oriented memory system, more vulnerable than other memory systems to neuronal dysfunction and probably unique to humans. This system is our way to remember past events, whether they be positive or negative, we have a one-way time machine embedded right into our brains to be able to reference back to those experiences. For this study, participants had to meet a certain criteria. They needed to be between 50 and 80 years old, non-smokers, fluent in English. They needed to identify as African-American, Black, or Afro-Caribbean. They could have no diagnosis of a neurological condition, nor could they be on any medication for a neurological condition. They needed to have resided in St. Croix for the better part of 30 years and their vision needs to be able to be corrected with glasses or contacts. The way we went about spreading the information of this study to attract participants was we disseminated flyers and postcards throughout businesses in the St. Croix community. At the 2020 Agricultural Fair on St. Croix, we utilized word of mouth method by approaching potential participants and explaining our study, handing them a postcard for which you see right here at the bottom of the screen and asking if they would like to be a part of it. There is a monetary incentive that we gave to participants who signed up and actually came to visit one and two and we actually had to use convenient sampling because we do not have a computerized list that um, can randomly select participants. So for blood pressure, we used a sphygmometer and to measure episodic memory, we used the NAC UDS Neuropsychological Battery 3.0. From that, we, from that, Craft Story 21 Recall, which is where the research assistant reads a story to the participant and we ask that they immediately recall that story to us and then after a 20 minute delay, 
we ask them to recall that story to, to us again without rereading the story. Category fluency is where the research assistant gives the participant a category such as animals or vegetables, and then the participant has 60 seconds, one minute, to name as many things in that category as they can think of. Separately, we use the mnemonic similarity task, which is a two-part computerized assessment. This assessment, the first part of this assessment, the participant is shown an array of pictures and asked to identify if they are either indoor items or outdoor items. In the second part of the task, participants are shown another array of, of pictures and asked if these images are old, similar, or new. In the Ray Auditory Verbal Learning Test, the research assistant reads two lists of words. The first list is repeated a number of times, and after each time it is read, the participant is asked to repeat the list of what they can remember. And the same is done with the second list of, of words. After a 20 minute delay, the research assistant reads an accumulated list of words and the participant is asked if the, if the words they hear are from list A or list one or list B or list two, or if it's a new word altogether. Perceived racial discrimination was measured using the index of race related stress survey which measures cultural, institutional, individual, and collective racism. Our descriptive results so far are that we have six participants that completed visit one. Three of those six participants completed our visit two. One participant was not eligible to proceed to visit two. And due to unforeseen circumstances, we have one participant that we were unable to schedule for visit to. We face many challenges during this study. And it came in the form of recruiting, collecting data, and COVID. Our recruitment challenges were that we misconceived that the availability of people between the ages of 50 and 70 years old. Um, many of them are still employed, making it difficult to schedule a time because in visit two, we collected a saliva sample that needed to be collected between a specific time. Um, our monetary incentive was not appealing at all because these folks had jobs that paid more than what we were offering. Our challenges in collecting data were that potential participants were wary of being part of a research project. They didn't trust confidentiality practices. Um, we live in a small community and many times people's personal business gets spread. And so there's a, a distrust when confidentiality is being guaranteed. Um, a second thing is that people didn't really feel comfortable in even opening up and sharing their lives with us or their lifestyles. Due to COVID-19, challenges became even harder because we had to discontinue in-person recruitment and in-person data collection. And because our participants were elderly and identified as black, these two categories were identified by the CDC to be more susceptible to contracting COVID-19. These are my references. I would like to thank you for joining me in my explanation of research, but I would also like to take time to thank the Emerging Caribbean Scientist Program, the Alzheimer's Association, Boston University, UVI, Dr. Karin Schoen, Dr. Aletha Bauman, Michael Rosario, and my fellow research assistant, 
Azrael Williams. Thank you.